Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, that's me again. Probably uh, you have uh, heard me uh, the last day. Uh, I talk always about Django, but right now, yeah, surprise, I don't want to speak about Django. I want to speak about Python. Uh, who knows uh, what Python is not only the um, animal who works with Python? Yeah, thanks. thanks. It's Python conference. And right now, I want uh, to speak about Python. If uh, uh, easy Python is lie, then lie, or this is uh, uh, lie only about meta classes. Who knows? Mm, probably me. Yeah. <laughs> and um, at first, I want to present uh, two authors uh, who works with this presentation. Uh, a first uh, speaker should be Gregory Petrov. He is right now in Russia. They cannot come to us. That's why only me here. My name is Maxim Danilov. If somebody uh, have any question, please ask us uh, after this uh, presentation, or uh, you can ask uh, us by email or uh, in our networks. All contacts you can see here, and slides you can download by link. Uh, and a little bit about us. Gregory works uh, for company Euron. Gregory is development relations, and um, this is a big uh, software, com uh, software company uh, which create uh, um, software by demand. My name is Maxim Danilov. I work for, uh, I, I'm owner from uh, Vaporsoft company. We solve complex tasks on Python. Uh, we both uh, work with different technologies. We both works, uh, work with big projects, really big projects, more than uh, 100,000 lines in Codebase. And we both every day works with complex code. In this talk, I will share our experience about complex code and how we can work with that. But the first question is, what is complex code? Somebody knows what is it? Or somebody here works with complex code? For example, me. Who works, uh, yeah, complex code. What is complex code? For me personally, complex code hard to understand. At the second, for me personally, complex code is hard to maintain. And for me personally, complex code is hard to change. Of course, I know we should not change something. What exists, we, can, we should only add something. But sometimes it happens we should to change something. And complex code, really hard to change. And if I summarize uh, the, uh, these sentences, um, I can tell complex code requires a lot of my working memory. And uh, according to Miller's law, we all have a short time memory, and this memory can contain from five to seven elements at a time. Who knows about Miller law? Yeah, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Miller law, uh, from five uh, till seven elements, for example, for genius uh, developers, seven mm, mm, uh, mm, good mm, past more. Uh, for me, for example, from four till five elements in uh, one time. Uh, <laughs> uh, and somebody can, uh, uh, can tell me, hey, Max, do uh, you can uh, use uh, uh, Visual programming, but I can answer. Visual programming is a pseudo value. It cannot help me to work successfully with my short time memory. For example, as a pseudo value for developer alcohol, 
uh, ones from, from them. But visual programming, it's perfect, yeah? transparent. Uh, we can draw the small pictures, we can draw connections in between. It's, it's uh, really readable. But what happens if I start to draw more than 1,000 elements and uh, more than 15,000 connections? I have one project with that. It's impossible to maintain. It, it's impossible to work. That's why I um, call visual programming is pseudo value for complex, uh, for big projects. The next uh, pseudo value can be easy language with fast learning speed. For example, language <clears throat> with low number of uh, instructions. Of course, brain fuck, only one instruction. But nobody can tell me what happens here. Who knows what, what, is, uh, what is that? OK, this is hello world on uh, dialect from uh, brain fuck. Once more time, uh, pseudo value cannot help me to work with complex code. But every language offers us different things to work with our short-term memory in an efficient manner. For example, we all have ability to split big blocks of code into the small parts. For example, spaghetti code. Who knows about spaghetti code? Oh, of course, I know. Uh, and we can split spaghetti code into functions. After some time, we start to, uh, to create more and more and more functions, and we should organize these functions into, for example, classes. We organize uh, functions in classes. Classes we can organize in modules. Uh, we already organize it, but complexity or uh, projects is uh, big and complex, and I can say we can organize models in libraries, but this is not enough. And right now, we see the software complexity problem. Look at this picture. Uh, uh, this is perfect example of a uh, developer. Developer can see only the small, small part of whole project, and uh, this, this small part, it's easy to work, but the, the developer cannot see the full complexity from whole project. And if we don't start to reduce the complexity, this project starts to eat us. This is uh, the short way for burn out from complexity in project. Who knows about uh, burn out uh, because the project was too complex. I know. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I hope, uh, I hope uh, it gets all OK with you and with me. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and every language, like Python, can simplify our work with big project. But how Python, exactly Python, do it? Um, I would like to go to Guida tweet. Uh, Guida tell us uh, the um, uh, Guida tell us uh, deep magic things hide in uh, some places, and it's designed to quietly help us. Python hidden magic, uh, ask known as layers of abstraction, and Python has more features to fight with a uh, software complexity problem. And I made a review of uh, important uh, abstraction layers. The first famous abstraction uh, in Python is special syntaxes. Python offers us to write perfect, clear, readable code without additional elements. It's perfect. Also, Python gives us uh, the new uh, operands or operators, for example, uh, Valorous operator. Valorous operator designed to work in logical constructions or internary operators. It's perfect. I can uh, create a new uh, value in one line. But what if uh, this um, uh, 
can help me to decrease the code base, to make the mm, current part of my code, uh, to simplify current part of my code. But what if I start valorous operator, valorous operator in a function call? For this as example, I emulate uh, n uh, uh, named arguments. Uh, it uh, seems, uh, seems already not too transparent what happens here, but what if I start to use all rows in lists or in sets? It's already low uh, have low transparency, and if I start to use valorous operator in comprehensions, it's really not transparent. The complexity from whole project grows if I start to use valorous operator uh, in different manner. The next, uh, the next uh, uh, syntax element is uh, argument separation. Uh, as a perfect way to document how uh, happens function call. Uh, at first, positional only, at second, positional and keywords, at last, keywords only. But every time, if I meet uh, this construction in my code, I should to remember, uh, at first, positional, at first, uh, after that, uh, positional and keywords, and after that, uh, keywords. Uh, every time, I should take in my short time memory this rule. That's why I can say complexity from whole project grows if I start to use it. The next uh, power, powerful thing, which I love, comprehensions. Uh, this, this is my really love. Um, we can uh, different art of comprehensions, list comprehensions, set comprehensions, dictionary comprehensions. But what if I start to use it uh, all art of comprehensions in one time? We can receive something like that. Like that. This is example from um, my SQL uh, Alchemy. I think the developer from uh, this code cannot tell me what happens here. Complexity from uh, our project grows. The next thing, pattern matching. It was a perfect talk before uh, yesterday, I think, about pattern matching. But for me, the transparency from pattern matching low. For, uh, this example I take from specification from pattern matching. And for me, it's already hard to understand what happens here. Uh, of course, probably I don't work with pattern matching uh, too much. Probably I, sh I should work more. But uh, complexity, if I start to use this construction everywhere, complexity from our project grows. The next abstraction layer. Next feature which designed to help us to simplify our project. Types. Uh, Types. Uh, types has a complex specification, uh, and types help us to document our code in already in code. But uh, if we start to use types without strict guideline how I should use it, we can receive something like as the uh, like example from as the leap uh, as a standard library in Python. And I can say this code is not more transparent. We lose transparency in this code. Of course, the developer of this code can tell me what happens here, but not everybody. The perfect abstraction which we can use to simplify our project as a ground, as a b our basis, Python data model. Python data model. Uh, works everywhere in Python, and we have more than 125 uh, dunder methods. And uh, if we start to use it or to override it, uh, including delete, uh, including subclass check set names, and more, of course, transparency of our code uh, uh, goes down and complexity of our code grows. 
The next uh, thing, uh, feature which we can override is, uh, for example, uh, multiplication, double multiplication, math operators, ellipses, known. We can override all ele uh, every element uh, here. And we can receive some uh, domain-specific language. It was lightning talk uh, yesterday uh, about creation of domain-specific language. Perfect lightning talk. Uh, for example, we have NumPy uh, domain-specific language. It's easy to work if I work with that every day. But on the other hand, if I receive the complex project uh, without documentation, and, and in this project, uh, developer starts to create domain-specific language, uh, and I cannot contact with, uh, with that, that developer, I cannot answer what happens here. Who knows what happens here on this uh, code line? I don't know. I cannot answer. The best possibility to work with this code, we should override it. It's, um, it's not possible to work. I, I don't know what should happen here. The next perfect abstraction, which um, knows everybody, is uh, scopes. Uh, scopes probably is a perfect way to split, uh, to decompose our code in elements by, uh, in blocks by five elements. We have, for example, local scopes. But sometimes in code, we need to use non-local scopes. And sometimes we use also, we should not use, we receive a global. Uh -huh. And uh, after that, we also have Boolean. And after that, we can use inheritance. And uh, we should to remember about method resolution order. And after that, uh, we should use context manager. And it's already complex to um, to remember all these uh, features from Python. And around these methods, we have already an established, eco established ecosystem. What I mean? For example, with the new syntax is async await, uh, Python gives us a possibility to work with uh, async content manager. But, but if I don't know how can synchron content manager works, I cannot answer how works asynchron content manager. Uh, uh, this example I take from uh, uh, from IO HTTP, and yeah, probably not uh, everybody can tell me what happens here, but I know what uh, what is it. The next uh, abstraction layer, perfect uh, perfect abstraction for us is metaprogramming. Uh, for example, decorators. Everybody knows about decorators. It's a perfect tool to change one object into other object, one function into other un function, one method into other method. But if we start to use it in our code without strict guideline, we can achieve something like that. Uh, sorry again about Django. This is example from... Uh, one Django, big Django project, uh, this is test case, and transparency from this code is too weak. I, can, I cannot read it, I cannot understand it. Of course, I know what, hap what sh uh, should happen, but um, sometimes it not works. This code is already complex. The next uh, feature which should help us uh, to write easy code is meta classes. Who works with meta classes every day? Really? Okay. Um, for example, uh, if somebody works with uh, Django, uh, Django use meta classes in uh, models and in forms um, somewhere else. Uh, but what is meta classes? Meta classes has complexity by default. Why? If I start to work with meta classes in my developer environment, I should install for PyLint additional uh, plugin. Why? 
BioLint can, cannot work with meta classes alone. He needs help from me or from plugins. And if we start to use meta classes together with context managers, we can achieve something like a domain specific language. Uh, this example I take from uh, PyQt, and mm, probably nobody can tell me what happens here. Uh, here I want to create a graphical user interface uh, with PyQt. But this code is already complex. Complex by default. Um, and probably we can try to use something else to fight with complexity. And <clears throat> the next thing, uh, next feature which I can use is a reflection API. Reflection API we can use if we want to catch uh, some exceptions and we want to know a little bit more why this exception happens. We should to um, introspect into threads, into function. Uh, there uh, happens, sh there shit happens, and we can collect all variables. But if I start to use um, use uh, this code block in Sunday in my project, complexity grows automatically. Uh, um, why? Not every developer in my team can answer me easy what, uh, uh, what do this code block. The uh, next abstraction which I want to describe, this is structured concurrency. What I mean is that if I start to write uh, a async code with uh, um, callbacks, this is normal async code. Uh, but this is a short way to receive a uh, callback's help. That's why Python offers us the other art of syntaxes, async, uh, async await syntaxes. And after that, this, these syntaxes, I can write structured code. For example, this example I take from Trio, this is perfect library which help us to write structured code uh, if else await uh, for um, function call. It seems like it's normal, normal code, but it works asynchronously. And complexity is, I don't know which part of code in which time works. It's uh, a little bit difficult to mm, uh, manage it or to, uh, to find uh, uh, error uh, in this code. The next uh, complex thing in Python is uh, async coroutines. If I call, if I await other coroutines from those coroutines and the next coroutines returns me async generator, it's already complex to understand what happens. Probably it's already understand my sentence. <laughs> this is already complex. Um, uh, task scheduler. Uh, this tool helped me to organize all my async parts of code, and this tool starts uh, all functions which uh, I want to start. But answer how it works, I can answer, but I, th I know complexity from th uh, those code is too high, also for me. And if you start to use, in additional, async protocols, like I, I wait, I enter, uh, I next, I enter, uh, I exit, complexity and transparency from our code grows incredibly. And somewhere this code starts to beat us or start to eat us, devour us. The next complexity which I want to describe is this dependency management. For example, complexity in dependency management has their own symbol, platypus. There's a symbol of complexity in dependencies. What I mean with that? Uh, it's complex uh, not only for jun junior, for middle developer is also complex. Why? For example, I want to create installable um, library. 
I want to, I should to start with setup AI. After that, I don't, I should not forget about requirements text there. After that, probably I should add pip file. Probably I should add uh, an additional uh, mm, uh, PyProject TOML. Okay, I created. I created. Uh, after that, uh, I should to think how I want to install it. I should use Python. Or, or not? Python 2 or Python 3? Ah, okay. Right now, Python 3. Python 3 minus mpip, but I forget something. What I forget? Mm, probably at first I forget about uh, virtual environment. Uh, and after that, I uh, should, uh, after that, I should use pipx. Uh, uh, after that, I can uh, wrote documentation, but sometimes we have documentation uh, which comes too late. Uh, these documentations don't, the, the documentation don't describe uh, the modern technology which we have in our project. Uh, it's uh, hard to work with documentations, but sometimes our install simply don't work. On my operation system, I cannot compile, uh, compile some libraries. Uh, for example, you can try to install UVSG on, Pi, on Windows or PyGraph Wizard on Windows. It is uh, really hard to, uh, to compile. After that, we receive relative import and absolute import. After that, we can meet circular import. Somebody knows about circular imports? This is a yeah, hard problem. Uh, sometimes we can meet uh, import log. And uh, after that, I should update all in my libraries uh, to use a new feature which I can, uh, uh, which I already integrated in my model. And uh, sometimes I want to change import on fly. And this all in dependencies made, uh, make uh, our dependencies complex. The next abstraction which help us to work with big uh, complex code is uh, mm, this is uh, uh, exception uh, error handling? We have exception. Uh, uh, I have exception which I want to catch. I have exception which I want uh, with this, this exception I want to fall. Um, I I leave uh, this part exception which I want to catch. If I work with exception from my project, I know about these exceptions. But what if I start to work with exceptions from other, uh, another library, which I cannot introspect? What I want to catch? Somebody knows? I don't know. And uh, this is already complex to find what I want to catch. The uh, mm, next abstraction uh, mm, layer which Python offer us, this is a standard library. Standard, the standard library is a perfect package from um, uh, abstract collections. For example, uh, we can import uh, uh, func tools, library to work with iterable objects. We can uh, import text wrap, perfect library to work with raw text. Uh, we can so import something from future. Uh, we can use enum to uh, collect all flags in uh, our project in one container. Uh, we use time zone and date time. And this all, this all, if we start to use in one project, uh, this all increased our complexity. The last abstraction which I want to describe uh, in this talk, this is our Pythonic way. Idiom tricks, uh, code snippets, which we use every day in our project. I think this symbol, Hydra, this is perfect example from our Pythonic way. We can do many uh, things in different ways. Every Pythonista knows uh, how it works. We want to receive element from an um, uh, iterable object or none or we want to receive an uh, element from hashable object, or we want to receive none. We want to check if this object is none or not. Or we want simply to check if this object something like true or not. Uh, 
Uh, sometimes we use uh, string concatenations, uh, strange string concatenations, uh, especially in vertical lines, uh, in vertical lists. Yeah, sometimes uh, the comma is omitted and uh, shit happens. Uh, uh, we, uh, we can use callable, uh, callable uh, objects like attribute container. Um, we can change our uh, closure um, after this closure created. Uh, I can send a, sp a special argument to change closure. Um, we can use uh, class body statements and uh, achieve these statements in uh, instance of class or uh, simply in class. Um, every code block is a container and uh, sometimes we want to maintain uh, to uh, operate with performance from every container in our code block. If we start to use our Pythonic way, we increase increase our, uh, our complexity in our project, and uh, we increase complexity in our work. Uh, I try to summarize uh, all sentences from this presentation. If our project grows, in a moment, sorry, if our project grows, the complexity grows automatically. If we start to use more abstraction tools, the complexity in our projects grows automatically. The next uh, uh, idea I want to tell, small complex things multiply complexity. This is example from um, computer game Path of Exile. Who knows this game? Yeah, uh, good luck. And uh, in this game, we can collect a uh, different uh, damage modificator. And this is uh, uh, only small a small part of our damage. damage. But uh, we small things multiply. And we can achieve till 100 million damage per second in this game. Small complex things in our project multiply complexity. Uh, Python is a complex and it's designed to create complex projects. And it's important. Microservices cannot help us. It's not the answer. I can imagine how I work with five million uh, rows in code in project, but I, for me it's difficult to imagine how I should work with thousands of microservices in, in one time. And at last, at last, Python can be easy, but Python is not easy, and that is intended. And let us to discuss it. The second uh, speaker comes right now, and we try to answer on your questions. Gregory, are you here? Uh, yes, uh, our obligatory Zoom uh, spiritual uh, check. Uh, so I can see that you can see me, uh, but uh, can you hear me? Yeah. We have some uh, Miller's first uh, here. You can uh, recollect that uh, from uh, slides uh, alongside with uh, procrastination that uh, stumbled upon us while we prepared our talk. But Maxim, thank you for uh, being uh, my uh, copy uh, on the stage. That was uh, amazing. And uh, now we both can answer some questions about Python uh, complexity and how it helps to handle big, complex projects. We are ready. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Maxim, first of all. That was a fantastic talk. Thank you also, Gregory, for joining us for doing the Q&A. Really great to have you both. So we have some questions. Um, and I can see some more coming in. The first one here is, simply put, what's the solution? Uh, uh, if if uh, if I uh, summarize my talk, uh, my uh, presentation, the first solution, per personally for me, 
strict guideline for project. This is a solution which can help uh, me to, uh, to set borders for, for complexity in my project. Yeah, Gregory? Uh, yes, as a hobby neurophysiologist, I can also tap on the flavor of evolution and uh, gradual things. Uh, you know, uh, it was mentioned in the talk that Python, it has gradual types, but uh, we are not limited to gradual types. We can also use this gradual approach to our complexity. So if our project is small or we are working on the small part of our project or even on some micro service, we uh, can exclude all, all complex things like meta classes, like decorators, like advanced things. We can start simple and keep our code simple. But the trick the solution when our complexity grows, when our code grows, we add advanced Python features, we make our code more complex, but at the same time, we fight complexity and uh, we make our code more readable. readable. So Gregory, do you like Java more? Rust, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, actually, um, uh, I have uh, Python and uh, I have uh, Ruby uh, here. I really do enjoy uh, Ruby. But, uh, you know, Java and Go programming uh, language, they were mentioned too in our um, uh, talk. Uh, my personal opinion is that uh, language simplicity is a pseudo value. It's not the solution. If your language is simple, really simple at its core, like Java or Go, uh, you can uh, enhance adoption. You can attract lots of developers as Java and Go did at the time. But if your project became millions of lines of code developers, uh, they start to struggle. Uh, uh, Go developers, they never create a Go project with millions lines of code because Go is for microservices. But with Java, as an enterprise language. Uh, it was intended to create such big projects, but language itself didn't offer any advanced tools to fight complexity. Result, uh, software patterns, um, patterns of software uh, architecture, dreaded patterns that break havoc to our uh, industry. And uh, stack traces uh, with hundreds of layers of abstraction uh, that's not uh, abs uh, acceptable and not maintainable. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I think we, we're running a bit over, folks, but um, let's try maybe do two more questions. So please vote which ones you uh, want to hear the most. There's a lot of questions, so maybe folks can also come and ask you, Max, at the end. Um, the next highest voted one is, does it mean the programming is hard? and you need to learn a lot to be a programmer? Uh, uh, for, for, me, uh, for me, programming is my life. I, life my, I like my life. That's why I cannot see the complexity of my life. Uh, it's, it's fun. For me, uh, programming, uh, programming is fun. That's why it's all for me easy. Uh, try to receive fun in your work and probably it can help you to decrease complexity. <laughs> probably, I don't know. Very nice. Okay, we'll take one more. Um, Gregory, do you like the KISS principle? Keep it simple, stupid? 
Oh, yes, it's one of the really amazing software development principle. As a hobby neurophysiologist, I can say that our brain, our prefrontal cortex, it's one ultimate abstraction tool. It keeps millions of ideas, the tree of ideas called Cognitome. And uh, it's natural for our brain to abstract mm -hmm. things. And when we uh, write our code, we automatically try to abstract, to introduce abstraction, to make things get general, to generalize them. But that mm -hmm. adds complexity that aligns our code with our brain but different software developers we all have different brains different cognitomes so uh, making things uh, complex without a need makes code mm, not so good and uh, it's really good rule of thumb to constrain ourselves to keep things simple and to add complexity only if it's required if we see that our project part of our project is really big and we need to uh, add complexity to make it maintainable so this complexity addition let it be our choice not our gut reaction very well said. Well, thank you both so much. I personally have to say I feel very uh, seen by your talk, and I'm sure many people also are feeling the same way. Very positive vibes. And um, everyone, can you please join me in a round of applause for Maxim and Gregory. Thank you.